after all this um, information, just uh, I would like to remind you that all of these, of course, um, apart from being recorded, it will be available on the documentation. Uh, and it's already available on the documentation and links uh, are provided through the, through the presentation and at the very end as well. Let's move on now and let's start uh, collecting some data uh, on, the, on the devices. So um, for collecting some data, uh, we will start with the kit, um, as we said, in uh, setup mode. So the LED will be in uh, red, uh, meaning that we are in setup mode and that uh, in that situation, there will be an access point created uh, um, from the Smart Citizen kit called Smart Citizen and some numbers and letters. Those numbers are letters and are the MAC address of the, of the device. And we normally put this MAC address on a sticker on the device itself. So uh, again, in this mode, there would be an access point that we can access with a phone or a computer with the name of a smart citizen and some numbers and letters. These numbers and letters are unique to each device, meaning that uh, if we have a lot of sensors in the same room and all of them are on setup mode, then we will be able to distinguish which, which one is which, uh, especially this is very useful, for instance, when you're running a workshop or when you have um, a lot of people with different sensors, uh, you can identify to which sensor you are connecting to by the name of the network. If the sensor is not, uh, or the, the, the kit, sorry, is not in setup mode, meaning the LED is not red, um, because for instance, it was configured previously, or it had been changed uh, to any of the other two modes, you can simply set or go back to setup mode by clicking uh, the on off button as shown here in the picture. This is a short click. Uh, meaning it's just a simple short uh, click on the on the button and it will go to uh, red. If for whatever reason the kit is busy at that moment and it doesn't change uh, right away, uh, wait a couple of seconds and then press again if it doesn't change uh, to that uh, to that uh, mode. Okay. So. <clears throat> to start collecting some data. Um, the basic way that we will use is uh, what we call the onboarding process, which is a web application uh, that is accessible through this URL. So start.smartcitizen.me that basically we will guide, it will guide us through the process on uh, how to configure the sensors. Uh, we will not do this today, um, the whole process. I will just go through the most important aspects uh, of it but because it's, um, supposed to be um, an intuitive interface uh, that it will provide us uh, the different steps and as well is documented uh, in our documentation. Uh, but I will give you some important aspects uh, of, the, of the process. Um, so uh, any sensor or any uh, type of uh, sensor that you have uh, for Mink uh, can be used, uh, can use the same onboarding. The onboarding is the same for for all of them, and is the single uh, point of access for for the for the for the configuration. You will see at the beginning that there's um, uh, two buttons. One of them is um, this blue button that says "Let go," and another one that says "Skip instructions." The gray button is very useful uh, once you've done this many times because you will skip uh, some slides uh, of them of the onboarding process in which we basically explain what the hardware is and uh, we give information of what the smart citizen project is and so on. Um, if you have, let me jump a couple of slides. If you have one uh, advanced kit, or if you have a device that is not uh, a basic smart citizen kit, which is the one that we saw earlier, uh, that basically looks like this in the picture. If you have anything else or any other uh, water station, water kit, uh, 
a smart citizen kit with external temperature, smart citizen kit with a GPS, any of those will have to do this process, which is in at the very beginning, when you start uh, on the onboarding, there is uh, a small hammer and, and wrench uh, emoji at the uh, bottom right corner, which uh, has a pop-up uh, in blue, such as the one that you see in the picture. This allows us to select the, let's say, advanced kit, which is basically a blueprint or a list and definition of the different sensors that the platform is going to be expecting from your device. What happens if you, do, if you don't do this? Basically, the kit that you will configure on the platform will be expecting uh, the basic uh, smart citizen kit with the measurements that we saw at the beginning and uh, all the other measurements that your device uh, sends uh, will not be uh, stored. So this is very important in case that you have additional sensors uh, because uh, this um, will allow the platform to accept those additional sensors, for instance, the GPS, the pH, the uh, dissolved oxygen, or in air quality metrics, uh, other, other metrics. And it will basically uh, tell the platform, uh, this particular hardware has all of these sensors, uh, accept them and put them in the database, uh, and then later on configure the front end to display uh, all those. So very important in this aspect, uh, here uh, you will have to select from a drop-down list. Um, uh, so in that, in that blue uh, uh, pop-up, you will have to select an, one ID, which uh, is different for each of the hardware. For the air quality kits, uh, you see them in here. So the basic one with this enclosure is just a number 26. For the ones that have GPS uh, and the basic kit will be number 32. For the ones that have the basic kit with an additional temperature and humidity probe, but no GPS, it will be number 38. And for any of the water uh, measure uh, stations, sorry, either, well, it, any of the water hardware, basically the water kit or the water stations, what we called type two, three, and four on the call, on the open call, it would be number 31. So make sure that um, this is selected at the beginning of the onboarding process. And in case that you register and uh, later on uh, the sensor um, and, you, and you realize that you made a mistake, don't worry. You can either redo the process or you can tell us and we can change this blueprint after uh, via support channels. Uh, although it would be um, best for you not to lose uh, the initial data as well in case that you are uh, already collecting some data on, on the platform. Okay. So, um, the only other two particularities that I want to show you uh, regarding um, uh, the onboarding is that uh, basically at some point you will get to uh, this screen. Uh, this screen in the onboarding basically uh, allows you to select in which mode you are going to uh, configure the kit, either using your phone, your home, or business Wi-Fi, remember the type of Wi-Fi networks that we support, or um, using the offline mode in SD card. Remember as well that whenever we use the Wi-Fi and that there's an SD card, we will have um, the data as well stored on the, on the Wi-Fi, on the SD card itself. If you go to uh, the Wi-Fi mode, let me share this. Um, with you. Um, so if you go to the Wi-Fi mode, uh, at some point, well, in either mode, you will need to use um, your uh, phone to be able to talk to the device or a computer uh, 
uh, an, an additional computer to the one that is uh, on the website, on the start.smartcitizen.me website. And you will get to this uh, screen. You can either, uh, you will follow the instructions on the onboarding, either uh, go to SD card mode or press start uh, for the Wi-Fi mode. If nothing happens, uh, for instance, when you connect with your phone and you connect to the Wi-Fi from the sensor and nothing happens uh, and nothing uh, appears, um, you can just uh, simply go to the browser and open uh, the website called sck.me and uh, you will browse uh, to that website. This website is only available inside uh, when you are connected to the smart citizen and, uh, and then the MAC address uh, uh, access point. It will not be available otherwise. This sek.me domain doesn't exist. So it is only available when you are connected to that particular network. Um, also, in some cases or in some phones, you will see that uh, there's a pop-up coming up saying um, that the Wi-Fi network that you're connected to, it doesn't have um, internet. So keep going and stay on, the, on that Wi-Fi network because it, of course, doesn't have internet. The Smart Citizen Kit doesn't open. It's not a router. It doesn't open to, uh, to a network. Uh, is basically you just talking with the, with the, with a kit. So even if there's a pop-up, in particular in Android phones, phones, it says, uh, "Do you want to keep this connection active even if it doesn't have access to the internet?" Say yes, keep uh, the connection, because uh, otherwise it will disconnect and it will bring you back to the um, other mode that you have configured, either another Wi-Fi or 4G on your phone. And finally. Uh, when you go through the onboarding process, uh, if you go to online mode, you will get what we call this device key or a token. This is the token uh, that identifies the hardware uh, versus the platform. And it's a token that is only, there can only be one kit posting with that token at the same time. So uh, you can reuse it, but only make sure that you use the same token uh, for one kit at a time, because otherwise you will be mixing uh, data from, from different devices. As well, uh, this token, we can recover it for you later on, um, but if you have it, um, uh, if you want to reuse it, for instance, imagine that you want to have different platform devices with the same hardware, uh, you can reuse tokens and you can come back to it later. So if you write down this number or this token, it will be very useful um, uh, for you in the future in case that you want to uh, reconfigure a kit with the same, uh, let's say, virtual device or platform device. Finally, um, on the onboarding process, in either case, um, either on SD card mode or on off online mode, you will go through a registration process of the sensor. It will ask you to do uh, different um, different steps uh, to attach that sensor to an account, uh, a user account. So you will need to have a user account uh, for uh, registering uh, that device to it. Uh, we will touch on that uh, later, but basically the, uh, the email in case there are privacy concerns uh, is not used uh, for anything else than uh, the account creation purposes. And in case that you want to receive uh, notifications for faulty operation of the device and things like this, but more on that later. And it will also ask you, where do you want to put the sensor on a map? And basically on that map, you can literally choose wherever you want to, to put it. We don't gather any location uh, and it can be as coarse or as precise as you want. So whenever you get to that screen, uh, you don't have to be precise. Um, if you want to uh, mask the location of the of the device itself, it can be put whenever you, uh, whatever you want. Um, this pin is only to, be, to to show the data on a small circle on the map, but it's not used for absolutely anything else. Okay. So. Um, Remember uh, or make sure that you pick uh, the right um, ID for the device uh, in the configuration process. 
and after that you will be uh, you will be greeted with uh, a screen saying that the uh, data is being recorded online and that you will be uh, uh, provided the link uh, with uh, with um, uh, the device uh, with the name and the user account that that you that you use for the registration. 